Good morning, students. Congratulations! Now you are entering into semester viva wise. I will give you a small overview about how to prepare project viva. The first thing is you have the title. You study the title, each and every word, and along with the meaning. And one more thing: why you have taken this title? What is the need of the study? The basic necessity. What are the problem identification? Ma'am, I have searched. I have consulted with the guide, company guide. They suggested me to take this title. Like that, you can give a justification. I am so much interested in this title. That also you can give as an as an answer. So why you have taken this title? And the next thing is your research objective. You must be thorough your title and objective. Otherwise, please don't enter into the viva hall. So thorough all the objectives. Next one is how many reviews you have been collected, ma'am. I have collected twenty reviews. Well, you can study. You just go through how many reviews you have been collected. Next, the third chapter. The majority of the questions comes under your research methodology. First thing they will ask: What is the research design? Research design and research type both are similar. Both are same only. Most of the research. marketing research hr all or comes under descriptive research so now i am taking the title of challenges and talent acquisition and talent retention in r&d software it is a problem identification in the particular company they have taken a problem so she or he is describing talent acquisition in r&d software and describing the nature of the situation nature of the characteristics of the problem it is called descriptive research so you can explain the research design is a descriptive research the next thing is what is your population population is a entire universe is your population they are completely some student have taken entire employee in the company it is called census survey census survey means a complete enumeration of all item in the universe it is called census survey now i have taken a sample sample means as representative of the population is called sample representative of the population is called sample sampling it's two types probability broadly category into probability and non probability probability sample means giving equal chance to the population giving equal chance non probability means discretion from the researcher side partiality from the researcher side they are not researcher are not giving equal chance to the entire population it is called non probability in probability sampling most of the students have used simple random sampling probability sampling is divided in many type a simple random standing number 1 simple random sampling we have used simple random sampling in probability sampling you can say that how did you take simple random sampling if they ask question you can say i used lottery method there are again two types lottery method use of table of random number better you can say it's a lottery method lottery method means chit out of chit taking select chit out of chit it is called lottery method so in probability sampling means giving equal chance and that too if you use simple random sampling i use simple random sampling you can say if they take the question you can answer i use lottery method there are some student use systematic sample systematic sample means nth element of the population i have selected nth element of the population ma'am eighth multiplication numbers i have taken like that you can eighth multiplication fifth multiplication nth element of the population called systematic sample there are some students use no probability sample non probability sample we are researcher is not giving equal chance to the rest respondent it is called non probability sampling we are not it's a purely discretion of the researcher it is called non probability sampling and that to convenient sample there are few student have used convenient sample means according to the convenience of the researcher researcher they have taken some respondent it is called convenient sample i hope i have given clarification probability and non probability how did you take the sample size 103 125 if there is a question you can use how did you taken you can use some formulas there are many formulas are available whatever you have selected you can use otherwise for you are mba degree and all for am full phd we are supposed to use some formulas for you you can say that my company guide recommended me to take this much sample you can say or some software i used 
if you dig any formulas they will ask another question how did you use the formulas so better you can say company guide recommended me to take or i used the software so i have got this much sample size that you can say next question why you have used chi square anova tools or why you have taken reliability test reliability test it is for are you going in a right track goodness of data can be tested through reliability test goodness of data can be tested through reliability in reliability we used cron pop alpha test cron pop alpha test researcher are you going in a right track it can be justified through reliability if you got 0.5 above value you are in a right track your objective title and your findings are matching that is the justification so you could say that it is for testing goodness of data i used reliability and that too i used pilot study pilot study means pilot is looking the world is a small way similarly a researcher instead of taking 100 sample researcher have taken 20 samples or 10 samples whether the respondent understand the question just for testing pilot study by i have tested pilot study by using 10 samples you can you can say if you used otherwise just leave it reliability test i used reliability test i got the value of 0.7 you can give a justification in that reliability i used cron pop alpha test everything i did through spss spss means statistical package for social science statistical package for social science we use that it has to use data view and variable view so uh, overview of spss just go through spss what is spss what are the two views are there okay why chi square why anova students statistics two types descriptive statistics inferential statistics descriptive statistics have mean median mode standard deviation everything standard deviation coefficient of variation everything and inferential statistics has para testing hypothesis comes under inferential statistics you use simple percentage no it comes under descriptive statistics and you people are using hypothesis testing comes under inferential statistics inferential statistic two types parametric test and non parametric test parametric p parametric means powerful test non parametric means less powerful test parametric distribution method non parametric distribution free method the powerful test here errors are less in non parametric there are uh, chances of type 1 error so in i tell you the examples of parametric ztf anova test comes under parametric test and non parametric test here chi square test man whitney u test kurskal wallis sign test gulmangur simranav all the test comes under non parametric test then why you have taken chi square why you have taken anova they may ask a question anova it is for analysis of variance chi square te, anal, anova comes under analysis of variable variance to find the mean difference between two variable a uh, researcher used anova test it comes under parametric test and chi square test it comes under non parametric test to find the association between two variable if you used a t test or a kruskal wallis test you can say boldly to find the relationship between two variable we used kruskal wallis test we used sin, uh, t test and all and next question if you are going with uh, other uh, descriptive statistic there are some student used mean rank test kruskal wallis test and all first you understand what is a parametric non parametric parametric has ztf anova non parametric chi square kruskal wallis man whitney u okay anova analysis of variance comes under parametric to find the mean difference between variable anova to find the association between variable chi square other things you can simply say that relationship between variable okay some people might have used correlation correlation to find the relationship between two variable correlation correlation regression to find the relationship between dependent and independent variable it is regression so this is a overview about the statistical tools okay how did you accept or reject how did you say so if there arise any question external examiner you could say that look at the table significant value 0.00 comes it is below 0.05 so 0 below 0.05 
hedged it. There is a significant relationship. You could say that 0.05 it's our table value. If you are doing manually, we have lot of table. If you are doing SPSS, 0.05. 95 percent is always it's our table value. Significant value below whatever number is there, that is our calculated value. If it is below 0.00 and all, it is below. That is a significant you can say. So this is the way you have to justify. And finally, and another question they ask, can you please say about your title, major objective relevant findings? Major objective relevant finding. We don't want all the Findings. They will say simply objective relevant finding. So first objective, what is your major finding? One or two. Second objective, major finding. Third objective, major finding. First you cover the title and objective, major findings alone. No need to mug up all simple percentage. If you, you how many hypotheses used? What is hypothesis? Hypothesis is a tentative assumption towards the research problem. Hypothesis has two types: null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis. Independent variable does not have. There is no impact, no effect on dependent variable. Independent variable does have effect. It is called alternative hypothesis. H not null hypothesis. There is no. We are writing there is no significant. That means it does not have any impact. There is some impact. Independent variable does have impact. It is called. Alternative hypothesis. So hypothesis, it's a tentative assumption towards a research problem. It has two type: null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis, there is no impact on the dependent variable. Alternative hypothesis does have impact on the dependent variable. Okay, these are the overview of methodology. If you are going findings, you just go through your major finding, and they will ask you, you did a project now. Can you please tell uh, major suggestions in your point of view? They will ask a question. As a researcher, you you must have confident because you did a project. Anyway, you have taken some effort. So thorough your major findings and major suggestions. Just go through two or three suggestions in your point of view, and you have to speak. And conclusion. One or two lines is enough. The thumb rule to get success in project Y is continuously you need to speak at least ten minutes about your project. First you enter, say wish, good morning madam, good morning sir. Then you sit and start that your name, say your name and your class. Then you start. I did a project in this company. These are my objective like that. Continuously you must have the guts to speak ten minutes, minimum of ten minutes. then they will not ask any questions much all the best thank you children